What's going on everybody? It's Grilling with Bronco Juggalo once again. And we is doing some yummy, yummy sausages. Check these out. It's a little dark over here, but check it out. And we also doing some hot dogs. And we just gonna have us a good old meal. You know what I'm saying? These are jalapeno and cheddar bratwurst. Yeah, buddy. That's what I'm talking about. Also got a little bit of lightning. We got some thunder. And we got some rain. And I opened the top of my water tank to hopefully get in a lot of that rainwater. Please give me some rain water. I'm tired of paying for it. Anyways, guys, I am coming to you with the 1995 cult classic Leprechaun 3. I'm excited. Hyped. Ready to go. Ready to roll. Spent all day at work. Directed by Brian Trenchard Smith. Starring Warwick Davis as the Leprechaun, of course. A different Leprechaun this time for all of you that still think it's the same one. It's a different one. Starring John Gattins as Scott and Lee Armstrong as the Hubba Hubba Tammy. You know these uh, old horror films, you gotta have some Hubba Hubba, right? Usually blonde, you know, she's blonde, big boobs, looks good in an outfit, you know how it goes. The Leprechaun, this Leprechaun has been pawned to a pawn shop owner as a statue. He's wearing an amulet around his neck. It turns him into a statue. If you remove the amulet, he comes back to life. Well, the greedy pawn shop over removes the amulet. He comes back to life. His pot of gold is left sitting there. What does the pawn shop owner do? Of course, he takes the gold. Now, a little twist in our um, mythology here. The gold itself, each gold coin, can grant one wish per person. So, it grants some wishes. The leprechaun also has the power by biting another person to turn them into a leprechaun. So in this, it's like a zombie movie almost. But it's still a hell of a lot of fun. So of course, after the pawn shop owner frees the leprechaun, he goes on a killing spree in search of his gold coins. You know, same kind of story, a little bit of a twist in there. And we love it. Now this is the first direct-to-video sequel for this franchise. Uh, they weren't too impressed with the way 2 performed in the box office, so they put this one out direct to video. But here was the kicker about it. It became the best-selling home videotape of 1995. That's pretty cool. And even though it was straight to video, it did have a $2.5 million budget, which ain't bad. This is also Warwick Davis's favorite film. He loved the director and he loved the humor in this movie. Excuse me while I rotate my meat. Almost ready. Almost ready to rotate. Those ones ain't quite ready to rotate yet. My tongs broke. I gotta buy some brand new tongs. I do have a couple cons for this film. I'm gonna get those right out of the way. My first con is John Gatton. I do not like him. I don't like his acting. I just don't think he's very good. And I wish they would have picked somebody else. But overall, this movie is so much fun, I can forget about it usually. I'm not a big fan of his acting, though. It is kind of crappy. The second thing that I have a con for in this movie is Leprechaun's death. Uh, in the first two movies, he dies pretty gruesomely, pretty spectacularly. In this one, he doesn't, and I don't like it. I'm like, eh, whatever. But, oh, everything else besides that, I'm a fan of. I agree with Warwick Davis. The humor in this movie is the bomb. Darn. I was hoping for a big thunderclap to emphasize that. Didn't happen. I love the kills. The kills in this one are very inventive, very unique. That's something that I love in this franchise, is it always has great, great kills. And that does continue on throughout the franchise, with the exception of Origins. Those are all kind of generic. I like that we made a little bit of changes to the lore. We kept the, you know, the main lore, but we added a little twist in there. We got some changes. Changing one into a leprechaun. The coins themselves granting wishes. A little bit different, you know, some added extras in there to make the story flesh out a little more. I'm cool with that. I absolutely love the dialogue of this film. I think Warwick Davis's lines are on point. Some of the best ones in the franchise. 
I love his dialogue. It's great. This is just a overall fun, awesome movie. If you cannot be a douchebag about it and not be a snob, this is a terrific, fun film. Trust me on that. Is it getting darker? I can't see the camera, but I'm assuming it's getting a bit darker. So if you can't see me anymore, deal with it. And my last pro, guys, as I get a thunderclap round of applause from the big man upstairs himself, my favorite moment in this film is the Elvis scene, where Leprechaun meets Elvis, and I love it. I love it when he meets Elvis, but it's actually an Elvis impersonator because, you know, Elvis is dead. But it is awesome. It's so much fun. I love that moment. And uh, because I love it so much, I'm going to throw it right here. Fine suit of clothes, lad. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, those shoes, uh, they come in blue suede. I, I really like them, man. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, man, you do that pretty good. Next time, make sure you get paid for it. Hey, man, see you on the flip side. That's it, guys. It's time for us to go in, eat some meat. I will talk to y'all later. This is Bronco Juggalo saying, fuck the Raiders. Peace! Talking about mob shit. Got a couple hundred grand, I ain't much. Mob shit. One phone call, you can get to Mob shit. Then we gave Tommy up to do the list. Mob shit. Good fellas always got a fool.